Well, howdy once again. Welcome to another episode of Let's Figure This F***ing Thing Out. And so far, I think I have been. Although I will say, I have gotten a little help from the Discord community for this particular title. And if you're using it, I do highly recommend joining their Discord. Some very friendly, helpful people there. So, on the agenda for this episode, we are going to take a much deeper dive into the building mechanics. I have uh, definitely uncovered a few more tips, a few more tricks, a few more secrets. And I'm uh, hopefully going to explain them to you clear enough that you'll be able to understand with no problems. So let's go ahead and dive back on in here. Here we are back at our original tester model. As you see, it's looking somewhat the same, although I spread the grid back out. And there's a few extra pieces. Don't necessarily mind those at the moment. Don't mean anything. But let's tear into this. All right, so to start, I just want to point out that all these windows are completely movable and completely, co well, not completely, but close enough, collapsible. So if you need to see more, if you need them moved out of your way, they're rather modular. Also, if you hit F4, look at that. Everything just disappeared and you can get a nice, beautiful look at the map. Hit F4 again, and there we go. All right, so I had originally touched on this gear right here, and that's where we're gonna dive back into start here with the first setting under base all right as you see we have drag off map to delete all right that is semi useful but for the time being we're gonna click it off and you'll see why here in a little bit now let's let's go through these features just a little bit deeper we've got snap to floor okay now that seems fairly straightforward so let me just demonstrate here we've got our little man here a little biker dude and if you look He's following the contours of whatever he comes up against. Up, down. All right. If we go ahead and hit snap to floor, as the name does imply, he will stay on the floor. And therefore, he will sort of, um, okay. Well, I, I guess you can dissolve him into things as well. And ha ha, surprise. Now, multi-place, again, this one is fairly straightforward. But it has a companion. And I'll explain here. If we come down here to grid snapping, we've got an X, we got a Y, we got a Z, and the Y is turned off, and there's a very good reason for that. If you're ever bored and you want to laugh, go ahead, click that on and see what happens. <laughs> Actually, I will demonstrate. All right, so we're going to go ahead and turn on grid snapping. Now, what this does is this allows us to place pieces in a much more precise manner. So if we turn that off, let's go up here. Let's find ourselves a fence. Just a basic run-of-the-mill fence. Here we are. So we've got no grid snapping on in place whatsoever. And wow, look how tiny that is. That is adorable. That is, wow. Okay, so let's go ahead and zoom in here, make this a bit easier. All right, that is adorable. But as you see, this just floats all over wherever we want it. No restrictions whatsoever. If we go ahead and turn on grid snapping, Go ahead and pick our fence again. Now, if you notice, we've got a bit more jump. And you see how it's going? Every half step or so in between each of these squares. And that's signified up here by this 0.5. So, if we have grid snapping on, it is going to go like so each time. If we go ahead and hit the 1, instead of moving a half click now, it's going to go a complete jump each time using the corners of the squares themselves and of course if we come down to the 25 now we move in much tinier increments one two three and four breaking it in quarters and this can be very handy when you turn on multi-place so you find where you like your fence lined up let's say Let's go with half, drop our fence here, and then just come over. There's our next, there's our next, there's our next. And they just keep 
drop it in the same spot. If we don't like the placement, we can go with a quarter here, get it a little more precise. And then of course, if we just want to get sloppy, we can go here with the one, and it just, it, it goes all over with large spacing. But as you see, using those two in conjunction can make your life a lot easier and a lot faster when trying to build. <clears throat> But as you see, these guys are really kind of tiny. Now, unfortunately, some things you find in some things you find will be tinier than you expected. And of course, you can just go into them individually. Let me just close this. We'll go back up to our menu here. We have the scaling option. And you can just rescale them to whatever size you need. Oh no, look at that. I made it too small, and I can't remember how big it was with the others. No problem, this is a great trick, and this is a absolute lifesaver. I don't know how I didn't mention this in the first one. Control Z. Control Z undoes the last thing you did. It's a lifesaver. Mm, coffee. Drink more coffee. What is a poison debuff look? Ooh, look at that. Look how cool that looks. With a little ball, and it's, oh, it looks like soccer. Okay, so let's go ahead and open back up our gear window. And just to get a little silly here, I'll show you what turning on the Y axis does. The Y axis, and we talk about grid snapping, turns this into somewhat of a ladder. And let me demonstrate. So we'll go ahead and Where's our fence? There's our fence. And hold on. This is getting tricky. <laughs> Let me turn that down. All right, there is our fence. We'll zoom in. Huh, interesting. It's actually not doing it this time. It was disappearing last time I tried playing with this. Let's go with the half. Oh, there it goes, somewhat disappearing. Interesting, and then if we go with the full step, oh, there we go. So it kind of comes up, goes down, goes all around. Yeah, as I was saying, let's, let's just not use the Y. Let's just not turn on the Y, make all of our lives a bit easier. Okay, so as I was going to say, before I interrupted myself with that, <laughs> we've got perpendicular Y and perpendicular Z. So let me go ahead and show you exactly how these are going to play out. Again, not necessary that you use them, but again, we'll go back to our little biker friend. Here he is, jumping around. Oh, he's still grid snapped. Let's go ahead and turn that off. All right. So here he is, free floating about, climbing on the rocks. Everything's copacetic. We'll turn on perpendicular Y, grab our biker friend, and okay, everything seems fine until, oh, Oh my, okay, well, that's that's an interesting way to pose him. <laughs> Turn off perpendicular Y, and there you go. He is back to climbing it, as you would normally expect. Now, <laughs> turn on perpendicular Z, we pick our biker friend again, and he takes a nap. Or, he's leaning against the rock, but he'd rather take a nap. He's just sort of chilling down there. So hopefully that'll help you better understand what this panel can do for you. And let's switch on over here to spawning. And this is another one. Now, I haven't really worked with this much. And I did play with the random rotation a little. And well, I'll show you that shortly, because that's, that's pretty interesting. <clears throat> but this is the one I really wanted to show you here, the uniform scale. As you see, it's set to one, and that means everything that comes out is currently set at whatever it's set for. So, well, let's just, let's just go back to our tower example from the first video. Come down here. Here's our water tower. Oh, we, we still have the... Yeah. Okay, let's turn off. <laughs> Try this one again. All right, so we grab our water tower. And there's our friend, the water tower, looking all fine and fancy. But let's say... We want him spawned in at a larger size. We don't want to have to go in and change it manually ourselves. Come up here, change your uniform scale. Let's say we want him to be at a three. Come down here, click on it, and now look at the size of him. Huh? 
huh? And that will apply to anything else that we pull in. So we, just to show you, I grab this other tower here, comes in there. We drop this back down to one, and we pick that tower back up again. There it is at its normal size. Same with the water tower. Come back here to uniform size again. Let's say we want to go smaller across the map. We'll cut everything in half. Now we come over here and grab this tower once again. Look how adorable that is. Grab our water tower again. Look how adorable that is. So this way it's easy to spawn in things at a standard uniform size, uh, making it much easier and faster to build your maps. The only downside I will say to that, the only, the only negative on it is that as you see, like this water tower, this is what it spawned in as one. That's pretty tiny compared to what the people spawn in as on a one. So see if we click this tower and we check, hold on, let me get out of this, let me get out of this. <laughs> if we click on this tower, we see its scale is a one. If we click on the person, we see his scale is also a one. So you may still have to fudge and fight with the exact size of things, but overall this should save you quite a bit of time. And let's go ahead and open up that window one last time. Under spawning, we have random rotation here. Now this one's, this one's a little bit interesting. So, uh, it explains itself somewhat, <clears throat> and I'm not going to go through its example right now the way it explains, but what this setting allows you to do is place things down with a random positioning on the different axes. So the example it gives is with the Y. So let's go ahead and... Well, hold on. Let me start simply. We're going to come over here to the side where we can see a little bit better. We're going to pull up a tree. Doesn't matter what tree, but let's pull up a tree with some look to it. Is that small? There. That's pretty small. All right. So see, here we have a tree, and this is how it drops in. Okay. Boop. That's how it comes in. And if we don't like its positioning in any of the axes, we'd have to go in manually by clicking our window up here, and then clicking the appropriate tool that we need. We'll get into that in a little bit. But instead, what we're going to do here is, so let's take, for example, the y-axis. Let's go ahead, crank up that y-axis. We're going to turn it on. Very important that you click it on, otherwise it just won't work. And one second, I'm going to turn on multi-place, make this a bit faster. Okay, so now we're going to spawn in that same tree. Notice, oh, now it's changed, now it's changed, now it's changed, now it's changed. So the Y axis, it is rotating like a barber's pole, if you think about it, just in a, in a big old circle off its center axis. So let's go ahead and turn that one off. We'll get rid of these just so we can make some space. That's a simple right click to bring up the, this other window here. Okay, now let's go ahead and turn on the z-axis. Now this is an interesting one because let's see here. And we'll boop. And come on now, I'm supposed to be doing multi-place in here. There we go. Hmm. Come on. Oh, okay. It is. It is doing its job. Let me just show you what it's doing. It's. <laughs> So what we are doing is we are now rotating it along a circular axis. And so occasionally some of them will come up through the mesh. Some of them will simply come up bent at a weird angle. As you see this one here, let me get over. Yeah. So that's what rotating it along the z-axis is going to do. I don't necessarily recommend that one for obvious reasons. Just go ahead and get rid of a few of these again. Okay, and then the x-axis. This should be another interesting one. And we'll drop. And as you see, now again, we're getting weird ones because your x and your y are both going to be circles just along a slightly different axis of rotation. And there, we're sort of getting the same layout, you see, as we did with distorting the z. So honestly, your best bet is to use this for landscaping, at least that's what I've been using it for so far. 
so you can vary up how your plants get placed around and they don't end up looking the same. So once again, let's go ahead and jack up that Y rotation to full. We'll click it on and let's just find this here, a little bamboo and click, click, click. And if you notice, they've all rotated just slightly around the same axis in the middle, giving you a variation. And after having placed on multi-place, it just makes a gardening job go that much faster. All right, so that about covers those two sections right there. Let me exit out of this. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start a new map so that we can play with some more of these features. And this is, this is very key. I did figure out, in fact, how to expand upon the basic map. Well, let me rephrase that. You're not actually expanding upon the map. Let me demonstrate. Up here in the top left, if you remember, I gave a very cursory glance to this particular item here, the map controller. Let's go ahead and open that up. And as you see, I just sort of glossed over it, just didn't really look like something I needed to play with right away. Well, sometimes I do dumb things. If we come up here to the top left, you'll see this little new button. Let's just go ahead and click that and, oh, look at that. Everything I was looking for last time and simply couldn't find. Nice and simple. What we're going to do is we're just going to come up here. We're going to click on blank map. And this is where it gets fun. So let's give our map a name real quick. We'll call this larger than life. Come down here. We want to make sure this is clicked on. It usually is. This is sculptable terrain. This way we can actually shape and carve the ground, if you will, of the map. If you turn that off, it's going to stay static, which can have its benefits depending on what you're working on. Below that, since we're now making a new custom map, we actually get to set the parameters and thankfully they give us a nice little handy size guide down here so we don't have to guess so let's just go ahead here I like to start simply we're gonna go with a 40 as you see that's halfway between the small and medium we're gonna go with an 8 because again once again halfway between the two and once more our 40 that takes care of the starting height for you that's all set. We're ready to go. It's been named Create Map, and boom, there's our new map. And it's very easy to switch between the two just by coming down here to this simple play button as it says Go to Map, and it says Press to go to this map. And it'll say the same here, but we are already on this map, so we can go ahead and close out, and voila, we have ourselves a larger map. There is one other technique which I have seen others use, and it is up to you if you want to try it. We'll come back up here to our... Actually, yeah, we'll come, up... blah, 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 blah. we'll come back up here to our build menu, go back to our gear icon, open it up. Okay, drag off map to delete is off, and this is where it's important to have that off. So let's go ahead here and check tile like to use these just to build out a little bit we'll just pick one and if you look we can come right here to the very edge we'll add it we'll just zoom in actually I did a pretty good job of laying that out got it lined up pretty good and we come back up here to our movement icon we're gonna click once again the four-way directional arrow click back on our tile just gonna slide it back Click, and there we go. Now we've added another piece to the exterior of the map, essentially extending it. And we can add more onto that. So take another one, click it in. Once again, make sure we're on the move mode. Make sure we're on this one and begin to slide it. There we go. Line it up. And voila. And you can theoretically keep building out. I don't know if anyone's tested the limits. I don't know if you really should test the limits, but if you design yourself a map and you do find that all of a sudden, oh, it's just a touch too small. If only I had, this is an easy way to take care of that. Well, all right. I think that should about do it for this episode. Hopefully the uh, extra techniques and tricks that I've figured out will help you along. 
They certainly have helped me. Hopefully this bit of a deeper dive will get you a bit more of an understanding of what you can do with the tools and uh, help you get in a healthy... Mm. <laughs> well, I just can't say it. So until next time, you take it easy.